Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming at you again for the next installment of, and the final installment for the uh, Hammer Dracula franchise. Super stoked, it's been a blast doing this whole series. I've been doing, I've done pretty good amount, pretty decent amount of, of uh, you know, coverage of some beloved franchises that I love, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, Evil Dead, so it's been a blast, and, and this one is the, this is the final video for the Hammer series, Hammer is a massive studio that put out an incredible amount of movies from the that's started from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 2000-ish period. This whole idea started when I did a review for a movie that is one of my favorite films that's come out. And it's, it's an older film now, but I consider it a real contemporary horror film. And that is The Kill List. And it was interesting because when I did that show... And I, you know, I always do a little bit of research, you know, to try to get a couple of, uh, you know, there's always, when I do these shows, there's always specific, a, a few specific points that I want to kind of talk about around these films. And when I was doing that, uh, doing that show, I, I, for some reason, I, I had forgotten that the kill list was released by Hammer Studios. And then... A light went off and I was like, you know what? I need to cover, like take a deep dive and cover the Hammer Studios catalog. Especially the the Dracula series with Christopher Lee. There's a bunch of movies. There's about seven to ten. I haven't covered all of them, but I covered all the ones that I own. And the ones that... I feel for me are the, just the best ones. They're overall you can't go wrong with anything. Christopher Lee. I mean, what 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 else can be said about Christopher Lee? Pretty much anything. He's one of those actors, and he's got that that kind of presence on screen that he can be in any movie, even if the movie isn't necessarily that great. And he's just amazing. He doesn't even have to say any dialogue. He's just got that kind of presence. That you f I feel like you just don't really see in films uh, as much. There's a few actors that I really love. Sarsgaard is really amazing. He was in a, He was in. He was actually the villain in The Northman. He was also in The Barbarian, which I haven't seen, but I've seen him. He was Pennywise in the uh, the It adaptation. That came out a few years ago. He's one of those actors I feel that kind of has that presence, like Christopher Lee, where he just has this commanding energy every second he's on the screen, even if he doesn't necessarily uh, deliver any dialogue. But other than that, I think it's pretty rare that you know an actor is is so powerful and uh, iconic that you know they can be in a movie that could be considered you know maybe just a turd of a movie but he's just so damn good that you know it's it's you know it 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 makes it for an enjoyable experience but in regards to films that christopher lee has been in i honestly have not seen one movie when i think about it that he's been terrible in like it's amazing the track record even you know with his later part the later part of his career in the later stages, I and mean, he passed away a, a few years ago, and he was about, I think he was like 93 years old, and he, he worked right up until the end, you know, just an inspiring character actor, and even his later work, especially I felt like when he was in the Lord of the Rings movies, and he played Saruman, I mean, that's some of his best you know, and he was uh, in his seventies at that point, and and I feel like those those roles of 
or he played Saruman with some or some of his best roles, some of the most iconic roles. Even you know, even uh, looking back in hindsight to his his incredibly long career, you know, with probably my favorite movie that he was ever in is The Wicker Man, the original, which I did a show on. I just love that movie to death. That to me is one of the greatest horror movies ever made, but and definitely my favorite Christopher Lee role. And besides that, all of the you know wonderful Dracula movies that he did at Hammer Studios. And so when he played Saruman in Lord of the Rings movies, I feel like that elevated his his uh, his popularity. I feel like that in, that those films intro, the, those films did a, a fabulous job with introducing him to new generations of film goers that didn't that that were not maybe aware of his of his you know incredibly prolific career from the you know 50s 60s and 70s and 80s just you know incredible not too many actors can say that they've been you know on the top of the heap for decades upon decades and even i think too like an example of him being in films that are not necessarily great but He's 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 just fabulous in it in 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 those roles. I think the uh, the the Star Wars prequels. He was in uh, the last three. He played Count Dooku in the Star Wars trilogies, the uh, the prequels, Revenge of the Sith, and he's he's awesome in that. Even though that movie is uh, not very. Not very good, but he is pretty fabulous in it. And that, I think, out of those trilogy or prequel movies that were put out, that's definitely the best one. But there's things about that film that are really kind of impossible to really uh, to really see past as far as the acting and and some of the direction of that film. But that being said, he plays Count Dooku, and he... He's just all he's uh, he's awesome in it. and and he's you know again he's got that magic about his persona when he's on the big screen. So and as far as like the Hammer films, even you know aside from all the ama- all of the amazing Dracula roles that he played, he also did other uh, non-vampire movies for Hammer Studios. And those are fabulous as well. Like, those are great. So I can't really think of a movie that he was in that was was bad. When you really think of his long and incredible career. The, uh, you know, and I, but again, like, overall my favorite role of his, of his, of his career is definitely The Wicker Man, the original so yeah, just amazing. I look at him as, you know, aside from just being such an icon in the world of horror, I've always felt like, for me personally, he's like always been one of those guys or figures that is, to a degree, a source of inspiration for me. You know, where he just has such a commanding presence. And any every film that I've seen him in, he's just he's just so in the moment. And interviews that I've seen with him over the years, like you know the level of depth that he actually had as an actor, which I feel was, I think to a degree he he was um, not given the credit of 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 him actually being like legitimately a really talented actor because I feel he actually had you know he was ty- kind of more or less typecasted to a degree as a as a horror actor but he also you know willingly signed on to play lots of these roles because he realized how how this was really expanding his career but also to a degree I think he was kind of typecasted as as just a horror actor which is not a bad thing. But I think he, you know, had an incredible de- an, 
an incredible depth uh, uh, as an actor and really could have done anything and he did do roles that were considered non-horror f- roles but predom- predominantly he he's known for for his uh for th- for that genre but i've always felt like for me he's just always been a personal inspiration Incredi- highly highly intelligent you know and uh, as far as having a skill set as an actor just pretty unbelievable pretty unparalleled especially for you know for his generation of at the time also peter cushing also a huge fan of peter cushing he he all of these movies that i've been covering for you know about where i've been talking about the hammer films peter cushing was also another character actor who just had an incredibly long career you know i think peter cushing would be worth just him as an actor would be worth doing a show or a series of shows on just the films that he's done. And again, he was mostly well known for playing Van Van Helsing in a lot of these vampire movies. But I think he again was had an unlimited amount of power and and uh, a skill set that was beyond, say, just one particular genre. And they, in real life, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing were really, really close friends. And I, and I, every time I watch one of these Hammer films, I always get a sense of that, that they were, you know, good buddies and that they were really close. And they, they always had such a, uh, an awesome chemistry on the big screen. And I feel like as a, as a fan, you really see that. So today is the last show for my coverage of the whole, uh, like basically the vampire series, uh, all the vampire movies that Christopher Lee starred in. There's obviously a few movies I haven't gotten to, and that's mostly because I realize I don't own quite, I don't own all of them. I thought I did, but I actually don't own all of them because there's just so many. But uh, but I but I own the ones that I love the most, and and that's kind of been the focus of the show but again there isn't there isn't a film really in the whole franchise that I would say isn't good or worth talking about they're all just really awesome so today's show being that this is the last one and the other cool thing about doing these videos of where I'm covering a franchise is I, I typically what I'll do I've watched these more or less out of order a few of them I've watched them in order but for the most part I've just kind of been putting them in I've had a, a stack of movie, movies that I've been wanting to get to around this show or shows and I also have other movies that I'm, I'm going to be talking about pretty soon that are not not a part of this but I've been just actually just casually putting them in and watching them but I've been watching them one after another. So it's always super cool to to uh, to tackle a franchise this way. That's that's how I've done all of the other franchises where I just watched each movie pretty much in succession, maybe slightly out of order at times, but just watching them all back to back and just kind of immersing myself in that in that world. And it's it's super fun. It's also a thing of where I see the films in a little bit of a different light when I'm watching them all together. And there's even been times of where I have uh, you know discovered some new things about these films. So this this last show today is is going to be about the taste uh, is going to be Taste the Blood of Dracula, and this came out in 1970, and it was directed by Peter Sazdy. Stars Christopher Lee, of course, Linda Hayden, Ralph Bates, who's really great in this, Anthony Higgins, Gwen Watford, Isla Blair, and Jeffrey Keane, who's another fabulous actor. And again, this uh, this movie is just uh, just another awesome release from Hammer Studios basically centered on these three elderly and distinguished gentlemen searching for excitement in their boring lives. They get in contact with one of Count Dracula's servants, and they basically raise Dracula from the dead 
through the use of black magic. I mean, it's just great. And I forgot, too, how much these Hammer films, especially, like, again, getting back to the thing of watching these films in succession. But I, I forget, I forgot, really, how much of these films have a, like, very much an occult storyline to them. You know, with the use of, like, devil worships, devil worship, like, some, some kind of devil worshiping cult. The, the use of satanic rituals, even though they're not really satanic rituals, but the whole, that whole like ritualistic aspect, amazing, and I love it. Lots of blood, sacri- you know, human sacrifices, uh, orgies, I mean, just all the great things you want from a film. The, uh, the ritual scene in, or scenes in this film are really great. I mean, really really elaborate, really gorgeous. That's one thing I love about these Hammer films is the production element. They're just so, like, larger than life. They're all... The the sets are all so over the top, and they're just gorgeous, and they just feel like locations and spaces that are... You know, that you could live in or that they feel like they've been lived in. So there's this really beautiful, like tangible thing about them which is you know something you can't beat you know you know i i think too uh you know in comparison to say you know obviously these films were done way before any form of computer computer generated uh, imagery or especially cgi you know blue screen technology and there's something so magical about seeing these beautiful scenes in, in these Hammer films where it just has this organicness to it and, you, and it feels lived in. It feels like a place you'd want to spend some time in. And it just creates this uh, alternate universe. You know, a lot of the times, you know, there's a lot of great films that come out now, but a lot of the times the the environments the, uh, the that these you know where these films are set in especially in a modern context are you know completely simulated there's not a real uh the things are not being shot in an actual location they're through you know various technology tech you know technological based things around uh you know computer generated images or blue screen or green screen so there isn't this, uh, you know, organicness to it. There isn't a tactile thing to it. So there's something magical about watching these Hammer films because everything that you see on the screen, for the most part, is a is an actual set or an actual location, an actual building. So it just has this this uh, organic thing that just pulls you in even more, and it and it just has a uh, a much more uh, the the texture is much more rich and and uh, I, f- I, f- I find it more it, when I see an environment like that on the big screen it just pulls me in more as a viewer and as a fan because it's just got it's just got that depth to it and that's you know for me one of the you know the greatest things about why I love these films so much. And especially, like, when I said in the beginning of the show, when I did the kill list, and I was like, oh, wait, I forgot that this is actually a, a modern release from Hammer Studios. I was like, I have to do a show on all the old school Hammer films because, and I, and as a film fanatic, I, I owe it to myself and to the films, these films, to talk about it because... I mean, huge, huge part of my youth. This franchise, you know, all things Hammer, and also the Friday Thirteenth franchise. Those, those are the two franchise franchises that I saw as a kid, and they were also the. They introduced me, and they were the, the pivotal, and they were a, a pivotal. Uh, part of the pivotal experience for me and they open up those gateways to horror those were 
the thing. So, so I'm kind of indebted to Hammer Studios to to talk about it. And again, you know, these films trace all the way back to the mid '50s and went on for decades. And you know, obviously they're very dated, but to me they're in a lot of ways they're not dated they're just they they're just uh it's a it's a it's like i don't know when i watch these films it's like being put into a time machine and it and it still holds up to me and for me you know there's a nostal obviously a very heavy duty nostalgic tie tie into these films for me but i still think you know that being said they still hold up you know in such an incredible way and i think it's all due to all of those variables about all and all of those examples of the the way the, the films were shot the the sets christopher lee the you know the great acting the campiness the silliness just wonderful and you know again unfortunately i don't have many of these movies on blu-ray which is kind of kind of ridiculous but i need to uh i need to do that i need to take care of those things and i need to uh because you know it's hammer so hammer time so yeah taste of dracula taste the blood of dracula 1970 one of the best ones i think as far as the the cult element and the ritualistic aspect of the film this they did one of the uh this the the set design is just incredible. I think it's some of the best set design, when, especially when it's pertaining to that element of the film. Obviously, the Satanic Rites of Dracula very much has that that aesthetic around it, which is just awesome. And, and also, the last film I did, which I think is a real another just killer movie, Dracula A.D., which is one of my favorites. And so all of these films that I've covered are definitely, for me, the the standout movies in the Hammer series when it comes to Dracula and Christopher Lee. Dracula's Risen from His Grave, Dracula A.D., Taste the Blood of Dracula. The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Those are those are my jam. Those are my my go to movies. So, yeah, I I recommend. Probably a lot of folks out there have seen these movies, but if you haven't and you live in some kind of weird cave, especially if you're a horror fan, these are like essential, uh, essential movies for for horror. And you know, I kind of look at these as being uh, you know like holy texts in in you know, in, in a whole genre, like these are, these are essential movies and, and, and Hammer was such a, such an important studio that put out these horror films. And I just feel like they're, they're such an integral part to the whole canon of what horror is. And, and, you know, to where, you know, and when they were putting out these movies 50 years ago, but it helped shape you know what horror is to uh, what what horror has become to uh, today in 2023. You know, regardless of the budget, whether they're low budget exploitation movies, kind of like where these movies were coming from, or they're you know massive, you know massive budget, uh, big big scale, you know Hollywood horror films. But just they played such an integral role in in shaping the genre and. You know, they're just so important to the genre. And I think without Hammer Studios, horror would be very, very different. And obviously the most popular kind of genre in the world of horror is, is the, you know, the whole everything and everything tied to vampires, you know, with Dracula. And also anything tied to vampires itself. Easily the most popular, uh, if you will, like subgenre in horror. So, yeah, thanks again people checking out this series it's been a blast you know we'll see what the next coverage uh of a of a franchise will be there's definitely quite a few other ones i'd like to get to so this is jason dean if you like this channel please like and subscribe to it 
Thanks for the uh, support over these last few months. It's been a blast. So stay tuned for some more videos. And check out check out some old school uh, Hammer films. You, it's, it's, they're the best. Thanks again. We will see you next time. Peace.